I know this is earlier than the rest of the conference is supposed to start, so I want to say thank you for all being here. There's coffee in the back if you need it. Um, my name is Catherine Marr, and I wanted to say hello. Um, I wasn't really planning to give a presentation during this time, but after the announcement on Friday, I thought it might be good to just introduce myself a little bit and then have time for our questions and answers. I'm going to try to keep it relatively short. Um, my name, as I said, my name is Catherine Marr. I'm the new executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation. I've been with the Wikimedia Foundation for about two and a half years now. I started in April of 2014 when I moved to San Francisco. I joined because it, I couldn't imagine a better place to be and a more important mission to work on. I was so excited to work for this organization and for this movement that I had long respected and long admired. Um, and I can't believe, honestly, I would have felt so lucky just to be working at the foundation two years ago. It's really incredible for me to have this opportunity and this honor to stand in front of you today. So this is a kitten. Hi, kitten saying hello. Um, I think that that's about it. Um, my background is that I have worked for a long time in organizations that try to bring technology and people together to improve their worlds, their lives, and their communities. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I spent, I got my career actually started at UNICEF, uh, the children's organization, and I think some of you would probably be interested to know or amused to know that one of the very first projects I worked on was actually testing MediaWiki extensions back in 2007 um, for people who had um, uh, issues with hearing or, vi or uh, sorry, accessibility extensions. So if you were, had hard, hard difficulty hearing or if it was difficult for you to read, we were looking at ways that we could use MediaWiki to create um, readers so that people had auditory assistance. And I was doing this in Ethiopia with young people from across the African continent. So it feels in some way that MediaWiki has always been in my future and joining this community has always been in my future. I just didn't know that I would eventually find myself here today. Um, after working at UNICEF, I worked at a number of other organizations working with communities around the world and it's amazing to be part of this community and I'm just really grateful. And of course, the thing that I know everyone cares the most about, this is my first article, um, which I wrote. <laughs> which I wrote in October 2014, and it was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. Um, it is about a homeless housing apartment in Los Angeles, California. I've never seen it. I think it would definitely benefit from a photo on Commons. Um, so if there are any Los Angelinos in the crowd, it is down on Skid Row, and it seemed to me that if there are all sorts of other beautiful palaces on Wikipedia, our houses that ho our apartments that house our most vulnerable should have their articles too. So it could use some help cleaning up some of the citations. I didn't really know how to reuse citations at that point. I'm sure that'll all be fixed by this afternoon. <laughs> so I wanted to talk a little bit about what I've, sorry? Oh. Fixed by the end of my presentation. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> I know you're on it right now. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, since being here, some of the things that I have been hearing. Because I've been hearing a lot of shared languages. I've gone into rooms with people from the affiliates. I've gone into rooms with people talking about harassment. I've gone into bars with people drinking beer. And I'm hearing more or less the same message, which is that as a movement, we are very interested in what comes next, where our future goes, and how we get there together, that we are ready for change, and we're not quite sure where it's going to take us. We're <laughs> in 10 years' time, as we look back and we say, 10 years ago we sat together in this village in Italy, and we reflected on all the things we'd accomplished over the past 15 years. In 10 years, what are the accomplishments that we are going to reflect on? And when I talk about change, I don't talk about letting go of all the things that were so special that have brought us here today. Instead, it's about finding ways to bring more people in, including turtles. I'm not, thanks for the help with the slide deck. 
communications team. <laughs> it's about inclusivity and being relevant and meaningful in new and exciting and unanticipated places. It's about having a shared vision that we're all building together where we are moving in the same direction even if we don't all share exactly the same goals. We're all part of a broader movement where we fit together like a jigsaw perhaps, like a puzzle piece, like a globe. And as I said, we build it together. So there's some really practical things I could talk about. I could talk about strategy. You'll probably hear me talk a lot about strategy over the course of the next year. But I want you to know when I'm talking about strategy, what I'm really talking about is what that shared vision is so that when we're sitting together in 10 years, we know what it is that we've achieved together. We all feel as though we were a part of the decision and the direction that brought us there. And I want to say thank you. I promised it would be short. I want to say thank you so much for, um, for being here this morning, for listening to me today, to our colleagues and the organizing team here in Ezino. Did I pronounce it correctly, Jenny? Ezino Lario, thank you. Uh, this has been a tremendous opportunity, and now what I'd love to do is to have the opportunity to have an informal conversation with you, answer any questions that you might have. Thanks. So I don't know how the Q&A works. Are there folks who can give microphones to people, or? Sure, do you mind? Are there any questions? Hi, James. I'm, uh, I'd like to ask, what do you see as the, the, the big issues that are facing our movement that you're hoping to address in the next year or so? So the big request or the big um, thing that I'll be working on in the next year is something that I talked about with the Board of Trustees over the course of the board meeting at the beginning of Wikimania. And that is really that question of what is that shared strategy. And strategy is not quite the right word. It is a shared vision for the future. And when I say a vision, I don't mean the vision. We know what the vision is. Um, it is a world in which every single human can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. That doesn't change. But it is a vision for who we are. It is a vision that each of us can see ourselves reflected in. And it is a vision that includes other people who are not yet in this room. So. How we get there is going to be the big challenge, and that's really the thing that I'm going to be working on and working with all of you. And I've already gone to many people and said, I'm going to need your help. And others have come to me and said, I'd love to help, and I really appreciate that. So if you would love to help, please do come, um, because I will be reaching out and the foundation will be reaching out. Uh, the, so the process that takes us there is a question, but I think that that is sort of the big challenge. The sense that I have is that people, we've accomplished so much, and now we all want to know where we go next, right? There's a sense that we have this momentum, that we have this energy, that we have this incredible movement, these talented people, these organizations around our movement as affiliates that are ready to go and ready to go somewhere, and now the question is where? So I think that that's a challenge, is how do we bring this energy together and take it forward in a meaningful direction? In a very practical sense, you know, aside from the vision, one thing that the foundation is going to be working on, you heard a little bit about this from Jimmy on his opening keynote. Um, and if you were in the sessions yesterday on community culture and harassment, we're gonna be working on making the community that we're making sure the community that we're part of is a friendly, welcoming, and inclusive space. And I think that that is going to be, that is going to be one of the biggest tasks we have ahead of us and how we do that Again, I don't have all of the answers. I think that there are a lot of good ideas. I was talking to one of my colleagues on the way walking into the venue. We have the Inspire campaign that's currently running that is soliciting ideas on uh, addressing harassment and creating friendly spaces and uh, building community culture that we want to be a part of. And there have been hundred, literally hundreds of ideas that have been submitted. It has been the best received campaign that we've ever run. Now, there have only been three, but Still, it indicates what a big issue this is and how much desire this is to tackle it. So those are two really big tasks. If I give myself more, <laughs> I think it's good to focus. Other questions? Hi.
just take a minute. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Gabriel Tulin from Geneva, Switzerland. I had a question, actually it's about a um, controversial subject, it's paid editing. Now I know that on the English language Wikipedia you have guidelines that are set up. Now do you think that the foundation should step in to impose or, or encourage the other Wikimedia projects to adopt uh, strict guidelines for paid editing like they have on the English Wikipedia. I mean, I know Jimmy Wales' opinion on the subject. I wanted to hear yours. That is a controversial question. Uh, so I, I joined the foundation around the same time so. that this was actually an issue with regards to our terms of use. And so I know that the foundation's terms of use require disclosure um, around paid editing. And I actually think that that is probably the place where the foundation should be on this and that the differences in different communities and in different projects, I've heard a lot of different arguments for why, for example, um, a smaller community might want to, in, might be open to having people who um, are paid to edit. I, I actually firmly believe that this is an issue that is a community issue and that communities should set their own policies on this. Um, I'm open to hearing from other people if they disagree, and I'd be curious to know uh, more thoughts on the matter. It's a, something that I haven't spent as much time thinking about, um, but for the time being, my feeling is, is that that is a community-by-community -community basis uh, in terms of policies. Other questions? Hello. Um, can we bring back the knowledge engine because a lot of us think it's actually a good idea? I was warned I might be asked about this. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think that the ideas that were contained in some of the product roadmap were really compelling ideas. And what I've heard from a lot of people, and I'm gonna paraphrase somebody who's may or may not be in the audience, is that the issue wasn't necessarily the ideas, it was the way that they were created. And what I can tell you is that what you see in the foundation's annual plan is what we're working on. So the work of the discovery team is the work that is planned for this year. No more, no less. And that is the work that we promised that we would do in our relationship with the Knight Foundation, the grant who, a maker who gave us $250,000 to work on exploring and understanding search on the projects. I think that there are some really good ideas in there. The big difference that um, I would have going forward is we're not ruling out any ideas about how we continue to improve the projects. It's just that we will do everything any conversation that we have about moving that forward will be in an open way where we put that forward to the community and we solicit feedback. Some of the biggest challenges that we heard about the idea of the knowledge engine were really related to the fact that it hadn't gone to the community and we hadn't really heard what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, how could this be the most relevant for our projects, how does this improve um, the ability of contributors to build the projects that we want to see. And I think that if we do that and have an honest, open conversation with community members and put that out there, have dialogue and discourse and then decide how we move forward, then I see no reason why we wouldn't pursue some of those ideas. And if those ideas don't work out, then we don't take them any further. But that is my commitment and my belief is that we can take any idea and lots of ideas and if we test them and if we have an open conversation with the community, then we decide to move forward together. But I would ask that we don't call it the knowledge engine anymore. <laughs> just, just we come up with some sort of new name. Other questions? This is weird standing up. Um, uh, uh, congratulations for. Uh, your new job now, right? Um, I just wanted to know um, what what do you see are the next important steps for the 
the collaboration with the chapters all over the world. What do you see uh, the next important steps to be taken together with the chapters? Um, I was really honored yesterday to have the chance to meet with two really important stakeholder groups from the chapters. Um, I had the chance to sit down very briefly with the gathering of the chairs of the chapters, and then I had a longer meeting with some of the executive directors of the chapters. And I know that that is the chapters that I'm speaking about and not the affiliates overall. So there are many user groups and other and thematic organizations that are not included in that. And so I want to be clear that when, as I talk about my answer, what I really mean is a more inclusive understanding. So it's not just the chapters, it is all affiliates, it's all Wikimedia organizations. But what I talked about yesterday with these two groups in particular was as we build, as we think about the next year and as we think about where we're going in terms of strategy, I feel that they are actually, and they are critical stakeholders in this. Um, they are for the in organizations that have matured tremendously over the course of the past few years. They're organizations with smart, talented people who are passionate about what we do. They have a perspective on what works and what doesn't work. They're used to the idea of setting strategy and vision. And I think that they are going to be essential parts of um, any conversation that we have that not just the staff themselves, but their membership. And so I'm really looking forward to having the conversation around as we think about our future, how do they fit in? And so my commitment is that when we get back, when I go back to San Francisco, to start thinking about what this process will look like, to propose a place, um, to propose a process that includes um, consultation and see if that is the right approach that works for all of us together to build this sort of common vision and strategy. So I think there's a really strong role. I'm really looking forward to working with the affiliates. I'm very excited about the perspective that they bring, the organizing capacity, the partnerships capacity, and I think they're critical to our future. Other questions? There's an etherpad, it's linked from the program if you would like to take notes or would like to review. Hey, Jan. Mm. Hello. Uh, so recently the foundation did something that I believe is a game changer in a good way in community relations, which is the MediaWiki community wish list. Uh, but so far only fairly, little, fairly few resources from the foundation itself have been allocated to this. So how do you see that going forward? Like, are you gonna increase this uh, or uh, delegate it to hackathons or whatever? Uh, this is the community tech wish list, just so I'm clear. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm really excited about this as well, and lots of credit to the people in the foundation who pushed for this to happen, and um, to the team itself, because I think they're doing incredible work. For those who know, uh, the community tech wish list or the community wish list is a list of 10 things that were prioritized by community members. And over the course of the last three months, that team has worked together to address three of those issues. The first was migrating dead links from citations. The second was, I think, global echo notifications. And the third... Sorry? One more time? Page use stats, yes, replacing stats.grok.se. Thank you. Um, and the really exciting thing about all of these accomplishments that we have learned is that they were all done in conjunction with volunteer developers and our volunteer contributor community, which means that the model for partnership and the model for getting things done is, unsurprisingly, collaboration. Um, so we definitely see the ability for us to move forward with this. We are adding additional resources. In fact, they've just hired a new person to the team and they have another open headcount that they're hiring for. I know that that team has been working very closely with the team in Germ uh, out of Wikimedia Deutschland, TCB, I believe is the, the name of it, um, in terms of thinking about how do we leverage and how do we, br sorry, how do we bring together the um, people who are working on similar issues together to get more things done. I think it's a model for us to continue to explore and, and it's also, even if it's not directly resourcing that team, it's thinking about how do we take this model and bring it into other conversations we're having around the foundation. So one thing I'm excited about along these lines, and it's a little early to see how it's going to come together, 
but that the teams in our product team, so the teams that focus on building the mobile apps, the teams that focus on building visual editor, just a few of the features that they work on, have been having conversations with the community engagement team, which is the team that supports programs like glam support, education support, around how do we start thinking about integrating programs and product development so that they're really in service of the work community are, is doing. And so I think that that model of collaboration is one that we'd really like to facilitate and encourage and see more of. Other questions? Odd. Can you comment on um, your C-level team and the open positions in it and how they were going to be filled? So, <laughs> excuse me, I'm just trying to get over a cold. There are three, op so the executive team of the foundation, often referred to as the C-level team, is um, the leadership of each of the different departments around the foundation. That's the legal team, our finance team, um, our human resources team, and of course the teams that many of you would work with on a regular basis, product and engineering, community engagement, also communications, um, and I know I'm missing someone. Sorry? Advancement, thank you, which is the fundraising and partnerships team. And right now we have open positions in three of those, three of those positions are open. The first one is a chief technology officer, which is leadership of the engineering part of the organization. So that includes, for example, our operations team, which keeps the projects up and running, incredible team, incredible leadership, um, release engineering, our services team, our research team, all of these are in the engineering department. They have an open position, it's a CTO position, chief technology officer. Then there's two additional positions that are both currently filled by interim leadership. The first is the Chief of Community Engagement. Many of you know Maggie Dennis. She's acting director or acting head there. And then the other one is the head of HR, our human resources. And we have a colleague, Jody Lohr, who is the acting leadership there. The wonderful thing about both of these two women is that they have many years experience with the foundation. Together they bring more than a decade with the movement. Um, and so they're excellent leaders and excellent partners. I think the priority, Ad, is the CTO position. We are really confident in the other departments and their strength, and I know that those leaders are doing a fantastic job. So for us, it's about how do we fill the chief technology officer role. We're interviewing position, people for that position right now. We're looking for the best possible person because we know it's a really important role. We have exci exciting and challenging questions ahead of us around thinking about the future of media, wiki, thinking about our technical roadmap for the long term, thinking about how do we re-architecture like, services in the media wiki platform, some exciting questions. And so it needs to be the right person, as somebody who can facilitate those teams to work together effectively. If you know any excellent CTOs, please give them my phone number, okay? Other questions? There's more coffee in the back. <laughs> you have another question? I do a follow-up question about the CTO position. For the ED search, you have reached out to a lot of volunteers and to staff uh, with a survey. Um, the CTO position sounds half as important as the ED position but also a position who will work with critical staff and a lot of volunteers. Are you considering uh, consulting staff and volunteers and in which ways? So the job description for the CTO position has been rigorously reviewed by staff. They move, the foundation is moving to a different model of recruiting for executive team members. It's something we pioneered it's something we pioneered with our new chief financial officer, Jaime, who is probably, maybe somewhere in the audience, I'm not sure. Um, and it's, I think, something that was really successful, which is bringing more people into the process, making sure that they have the opportunity to comment on the job description, making sure that they've had the chance to sit down with interview candidates, and we're doing something very similar for the CTO. So the job description that's out there is one that has been built by the engineering teams themselves. Staff have had a lot of opportunity to give feedback to it, 
I believe it was actually up on either Meta or MediaWiki for community consultation. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure of the specifics of when, but I'm I'm seeing James Forrester nod next to you, so I'm saying I'm saying yes, it was. It was okay. It was up for community consultation, not perhaps as rigorous a process as the one that we went through for the executive director, but definitely a, I think that is the way that we are going to continue to move forward is making these things open and getting more feedback. So I know that there are five minutes left. So are there any additional questions or maybe one last question? I see Andy. Did you fix my citations? Um, <laughs> I, just wait, wait for the mic, Andy. Sorry. Hi. Uh, before my question, yes, we need translations of the description of your article in other languages in Wikidata, please. So I can see several laptops open. Um, the question is, sometimes we have two parts of the community working against each other. Specifically at the moment, I'm thinking we have lots of people doing work in Wikidata, and we have some Wikipedias that are resisting displaying data from Wikidata in the articles in their wiki. Um, Sometimes we can resolve that just by discussion and consensus, but where we can't, how do you think the foundation can help us to resolve intractable differences between different parts of the community or different parts of the movement? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question, and to be honest, I'm not as familiar with the conflict that you're describing to be able to think, give you a thoughtful answer on that. Yeah, so, the question of where the foundation should be involved on the projects, I think, is a perennial question, right? Um, I think you could walk into a room with 10 Wikimedians and you would have 20 different answers as to what the foundation's role should be. Maybe, maybe 30, um, depending on what time of day it was. And so one way that I think about this is what is it that people need and can we give help provide a structured environment to have those conversations around what people's objectives are, where they see the blockers and perhaps facilitate a conversation that gets people to a place where they can solve or resolve it on their own. I understand that when conflict happens in any scenario, on Wikimedia, off Wikimedia, in real life, what have you, one of the most valuable ways of moving forward is having some form of mediation, and perhaps that's a role that the foundation can play, but only, I would expect, on request, and with the um, implicit understanding and desire from both parties that that would be a role that the foundation plays. I, I think that that's a good question, and I don't know that I have an answer for it. It just it strikes me that some sort of facilitative role would probably be the sort of direction that we would look at. Any other last questions? Or I think otherwise, it is time. Yeah. All right, I just want to say thank you so much for getting up early this morning and coming and joining me. Um, and it has been an incredible week with all of you. And I'm really looking forward to working together over the next year. I think we have a lot to do. And I'm incredibly excited about it. Oh. Yeah. The question was, will I be open to more questions? And the answer is, questions are always welcome. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> great question. Uh, so what I wanted to say is thank you so much. I'm really excited for this coming year. I know that I have to hand over the stage now to Tillman, who is going to tell you a little bit about the WMF the Wikimedia Foundation. It's going to be a great presentation. I saw a version of it earlier. It is fantastic and very interesting. I encourage you to stick around. And if I haven't met you yet, walking around, uh, as you know today, please come up and introduce yourselves. I'm really looking forward to working together, and I just want to say thank you all again.